I uh, thank the speaker, and I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. So ordered. The important question being asked today with regards to foreign policy is should the United States impose a no-fly zone over Libya? There are leaders on, in both sides of uh, Congress uh, and leaders in, on both parties who are now advising this, as well as individuals in the administration. It is my opinion that we should not. It would be foolish. It would have a downside, and we should think very, very carefully before we go expanding the wars that we're already involved in. We're in two major wars with Iraq and Afghanistan, and that involves Pakistan and Yemen already. So to go into Libya now and impose a no-fly zone, we have to remember a no-fly zone is an act of war. Now, what moral right do we have to participate in war activity against Libya? Libya hasn't done anything to the United States. They're not a threat to our national security. There's been no aggression. There's no constitutional authority for a president to willy-nilly go and start placing no-fly zones over countries around the world. And, you know, we tried this in the, uh, in, in, in the 1990s. Uh, and did it for eight or nine years. We had a no-fly zone along with sanctions and, and blockades around I Iraq. And uh, finally it ended up a war, and the wars were based on lies. And then when that happened, they said, yes, but it was, it, it was well worth it because we got rid of a bad guy. But we also lost close to 4,500 American military people, 30-some thousand severe injuries, hundreds of thousands applying now for disability, because we went to war when we shouldn't have gone to war. And to expand this war now makes no sense whatsoever. It's against international law. It challenges the uh, War Powers Resolution. And uh, for, for that reason, we should stop and think. Congress should act. I'm proposing to, in, uh, uh, preparing to introduce a resolution next week as a of Congress that the executive branch can't do this without approval from the Congress. Why should we do this? Do you, do you think it'll cost some money? Yes, it's going to cost a ton of money. And uh, it's going to have innocent people will be killed. You can't just all of a sudden turn a switch and say, don't fly over Libya. You have to bomb a lot of, uh, of anti-aircraft sites and a lot of military establishment. So the war is on. And uh, for, from my viewpoint, this is the kind of thing that's been going, going on too long. It contributes significantly to our bankruptcy. And uh, we are now spending approximately a trillion dollars a year maintaining our empire around the world. We are in the process of remaking all the borders and uh, leadership in Middle East and Central Asia and now North Africa we get involved. We had invested 70 billion dollars trying to prop up a dictator in Egypt and look how that ended up. Now we're hustling around to find out who the next dictator is. So if we get involved uh, I'm not sure they even know who to bomb and why, uh, which one and who's going to come out on top. That is an internal matter it's a civil war that's going on, and we can cheer for one side or the other, but that is not a justification to place the burden on the American people, both militarily and individualized as well as monetarily. Now, some would say that, yes, that sounds good, I agree with you that, but as long as we get approval from the UN and NATO, it'll be okay. But, you know, that's just a, really a cop-out. Uh, what army and air force and technology does the UN have and what does NATO have? You get, a, you, you get a resolution the UN and say, well, let's take out this bad guy and do these things, uh, or NATO does it. They're all our airplanes and they're all our money, and no matter what, anything and everything that goes wrong, the United States will be blamed for it. And there's enough resentment against us already for pretending that we can tell every other country how to live. The best way to look at this, I believe, is how would we as a people and how would we as a Congress respond if we were a weaker nation and there was, there was a stronger nation that they came and imposed uh, no fly zone over us or had sanctions against us or had a blockade. We, we wouldn't accept that. That would unify us. So I don't buy into this thing that uh, this is the only humanitarian thing that we can do is expand the war. 
If we want to do something for humanity, we need a new foreign policy. We need a foreign policy that isn't built on militarism. It's built on more cooperation and more trade and not picking our dictators. Look at, look at what happened after we picked the dictator for Iran. It lasted, sure, 25 years or so, but eventually it radicalized the Islamists and, and they had a revolution and we came out on the short end of that. So I think it's time that we reassess this and think about a policy that makes a lot more sense and economically we need to do it. I yield back.